This is Draft Among This Crowd, a podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Humphreys McGee. Each week will feature a rotating schedule of insightful full show recaps, interviews with fellow Umphreaks, members of Team UM, as well as other musicians who have been inspired by and or played with the band. This is your place for all the latest news and happenings within the world of Umphreys, helping keep you informed on what's been recently released or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah Jahimiak. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this week of Drapped Among This Crowd. I hope that you were able to check out last week's episode where I chatted with Of Clocks and Clouds guitarist and lead vocalist Joe Salgo. Joe and I talk about a ton of topics, of course, his band. He reminisces about being a manager at American Beauty in New York City. We, of course, talk about Umphreys McGee and a whole bunch more. There is a link in the show notes where you can watch or listen if you missed it. Thank you again to Joe for your time. It was such a pleasure chatting. Really looking forward to seeing your band play live when we can enjoy some live music again. Check out the newest release from Of Clocks and Clouds live from Nightlight Music Festival 2019 anywhere you stream music. Do you have a small business that makes shirts, pins, jewelry, stickers, prints, or sells other interesting products or art that you think peeps would love to get their hands on? Is your band looking to get some attention from fellow music-loving umfreaks? Maybe you provide an awesome service that could make folks' lives better or easier and want some like-minded clientele? Or perhaps you're looking to hire some cool people to work with. Let Dropped Among This Crowd and Conduit E-Magazine help you get the word out. With ad space in monthly issues of Conduit, commercial spots on the podcast, ticket giveaways, social media plugs, product reviews, guest spots on the show, and more, Dropped Among This Crowd and Conduit can help you reach tons of fellow umfreaks, musicians, and other kind folks looking to purchase from you, work with you, and support their fellow umph family. Email dropped at gmail.com or conduit emagazine at gmail.com if you're interested in chatting more about the amazing packages we offer. Real quick, want to mention Umphreys has announced they'll be streaming the 2010 New Year's Eve show. This run was the ending of a 10 year consecutive New Year's Eve shows in Chicago. The next year would actually be in St. Louis, Missouri. Apparently, this show was filmed with the intention of being released in 2011, which didn't happen. You know, Umphreys continued to go full speed ahead, and this project kind of got pushed to the background. But lucky for us, they've found the tapes, and we get to watch the show. Premiering on Friday, January 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern, the three sets of music that clocks in at over four hours can be replayed on demand for 48 hours after the premiere on Friday. There is a link in the show notes where you can snag your $20 ticket, and if any of the limited edition merch bundles are still available, you'll find them there too.
This week, I am excited to bring you a little review of the Jake Private Show I had back in October for Halloween on October 30th. Obviously, this was an incredible evening of music. That's an understatement. (laughs) Just the way that Jake creates is otherworldly. And with these private shows, you get the opportunity to watch that unfold in front of your eyes in a whole new way. I seriously cannot say enough good things about having the opportunity to do things like this. If you have not checked out what Lively offers, you seriously need to. On top of these shows that Jake does, um, he also offers lessons and hangs. And Joel also offers private shows, lessons and hangs. Chris has hangs and lessons, as does Stasic. And Bayless is currently only doing lessons, but he has done a couple of special event hangs. I just, seriously, I can't express enough how personally things like this are a silver lining for me right now. And, you know, it's not the same as a real show, but it certainly helps. And it also helps satisfy the need that Jake has for playing live music in front of people. This was the second time I've done one of these Jake shows. The last one was back at the end of July for my birthday. And I also did an episode about that evening, which was another incredible night of music. I suggest you give that one a listen. There is a link in the show notes where you can check it out if you haven't. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to tell you a little bit more about the Save Our Stages Act and the National Independent Venue Association. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that 90% of independent venues could close permanently because of the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on the live music industry. There unfortunately have been some venues that had to make the difficult decision to permanently close their doors. We can help save our favorite venues with the National Independent Venue Association in asking Congress to pass the Save Our Stages Act. It's been passed in the House of Representatives, but it's not a law yet. NEVA is pushing for it to be part of the next COVID relief package, providing critical funding to help independent venues survive. Even if you've done this already, You can take meaningful action again by contacting your local legislators in just 30 seconds at SaveOurStages.com. There's a link in the show notes where you can head right to their page and let your congressional representatives know how important the live music industry is and why it's so crucial to save our stages. All right, so let's get to this Private Jake Halloween show. A quick shout out and thank you to my party guests, Leah, Aliana, Elizabeth, Patrick, Daisha, and Ben, Jonathan, Elise, and her whole crew, Lacey and Mark, Cordell and Tammy, Steph and her husband, and of course, my husband and kids for attending. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did during this show. Dressing up for the evening was encouraged, but not required for our little virtual party. And to answer your question, yes, Jake did dress up. I was so thrilled when he came on the camera and he was dressed up. I was like, yes, this is so awesome. (laughs) He wore a wig that he described as his Blackie Lawless from Wasp wig and a denim jacket from his high school days that he found in his mom's closet. It was awesome. It was very awesome. Before getting the evening started, Jake told us that it was a Telecaster night. Kicking it off with a new rendition of Glory. Jake calls it Glory Funk. Not too many people have heard this, he said. And Glory can most certainly envelope in this more often, and I would not be mad at all. The sexiness that oozed off of this version, it was just beautiful. 
From the Beginning by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Next, Alibaba's Tahini has covered this one at a show that I listen to pretty frequently, and I know I've mentioned before on the podcast. September 30th, 2017 at Vegetable Buddies in South Bend, Indiana. I will link that show in the show notes so you can give it a spin if you haven't. It is available on Nugs to listen to. Just a phenomenal show, even though founding member Carl Engelman was not playing that evening. Instead, Khalil Smiley was on the bass. Umphreys has also played this song only one time, March 11th, 2016, at the Moore Theater in Seattle, Washington. Before trying the next one on, Jake says that he took the wish list of songs and worked up alternative versions. Giving us an incredible treat next, Mall Shays with a whole new twist and turn. Playing over a track that he made previously of him beatboxing, also getting a little bit of the keys involved in there, just all of these moving parts that he's got going on. Just incredible. <laughs> Throughout, it would have this heavy, cloppy, 70s kind of like this guy kind of leaning back wide stride walking down the sidewalk vibe I don't know that's just kind of like what I saw in my mind uh when I was listening to that honestly really all you can say after listening to that version was just fuck yes (laughs) this is easily up there as my favorite versions of Malchais I will never not think of this song this way Now that Jake has tried this on, when I listen to other versions of Malchais, and he does say, you never know, maybe we'll see this, you know, this version played by Umphrey sometime, and that would be incredible. Yes, please. Please give this to them in that way, and I want to hear the full band try that on for size. And I got to say, the random classic rock facts that he gives during these private shows are just incredible. I mean, we all know that Jake's musical knowledge is out of this world, I'm, but I'm still blown away when he shares these facts about these musicians or this album or whatever. It's just like, wow, it's amazing. And actually, because of him mentioning different musicians during these two shows I've done, I'll do a Google search because I'll be like, oh yeah, I've heard that guy's name before, but I'm not super familiar with his work or whatever. And so I'll do a Google search about them and then I'll read some stuff and learn a whole bunch of stuff about a musician I didn't know anything about, which is so awesome. And it's happened with music. I've mentioned this before that Umphreys will cover a song and I'm not really familiar with that band's catalog. So I'll go and I'll listen and be like, oh, wow, that's really good. And it happens with this. And I think it's really awesome. It helps broaden your horizons and learn more things. I think it's really great. Going back to ABT days with Cat's Tune Next, last played July 3rd, 2013 at Frederick Meyer Gardens in Grand Rapids, Michigan. A little bit of trivia for you in case you didn't know, that song was written about Jake's wife. Switching gears completely with the next tune, Little Gift, into Seek and Destroy by Metallica. My husband, the Metallica fan, was all about this. Headbanging in the living room, just loving every second of it. And in case you're wondering, these two fit together seamlessly. Another moment from the evening that I could see translating very well to the Umphrey stage. I will admit I'm not a huge Metallica fan, but when Jake sings and plays it, that's a different story. (laughs) That Metallica tune has been covered by Umphreys two times, October 28th, 2005 at the House of Blues in Las Vegas, Nevada, and February 7th, 2008 at Richards on Richard in Vancouver, British Columbia, one of the only four times They've played in Vancouver. The last full full band show there would be October 23rd, 2008 at the same venue I just mentioned. 
calming things down and pivoting into a dancier, more upbeat end of the road. Jake playing over a backing track of a beat he made. He would bring the keys in again during the thick of the jam. This one would get an ominous feel to it as it slipped a little further down the rabbit hole. Plush by Stone Temple Pilots next. And this one I asked for, and I'm so happy that he played it. (laughs) Not only do I just absolutely love the way he sings this, but there is a really great story that his mom shared with me from his childhood about this song. A memory that she has of him playing this during a high school talent show, just him out on the stage in his folding chair with him and his guitar. She shared that story in the conversation I had with her on the show way back during the first year of the podcast. I'll throw a link in the show notes where you can listen or re-listen if you'd like. It's a really wonderful chat, and his mom is seriously just the nicest woman ever. Really. You definitely listen to that if you haven't. It's such a great, great episode. Umphreys has covered this two times, actually. I thought it was only once until I double-checked on all things Umphreys. Recently, May 19th, 2018, at Hampton Beach Casino in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, a version I listen to very often. The debut of that was December 6th, 2015 at Dominican Holidays. Up next, a Jake original tune called Sunday Dark. He described it as a metal, toolish kind of thing. Jake mentions playing all the drums on this, making the backing track, and being a legit one-man band, which he did throughout the whole show. Definitely sounds like something that Umphreys would strap on either as its own tune, but I could definitely see this being a walkout tune in the future, something we could hear them play before they slip into something else to really get the show started. Jake also mentions that one day we may see that in the Umphreys catalog as well. Would not be surprised at all to see that someday. When he's done ripping it to shreds, Jake describes it as... 1999 shrapnel label butt rock. Yeah. (laughs) He said being in quarantine, he gets a chance to write all these tunes, some surfacing for the first time in the private shows he does. And no doubt doing these shows helps him keep the creative writing skills and juices sharp and flowing during this time. And it helps him come up with things that he can bring to the table Whenever Umphreys comes together to work on some music, you know, it helps him stay in that mode of of creating, even right now when it's kind of shitty. Dancing into Soul Food 1, into Soul Food 2 next. That was, of course, a lot of fun. A very special and awesome mashup that Jake put together based on a request that my husband and I made. First time ever, and he needed to use two separate cheat sheets, an iPad and a cheat sheet for this. But he mashed up Down on Main Street by Bob Seger and Mr. Crowley by Black Sabbath. I chose the Bob Seger song. My husband chose the Black Sabbath song. Slips into a sort of reggae vibe when it puts on Mr. Crowley. Yes, that is what I said, and you can tell, like, I'm still grinning ear from here from this. Like, I still, my mind is blown. I just, words cannot truly convey, like, the awesomeness and how incredible this whole thing was, this mashup was. You know, obviously, one of my favorite parts of the evening, it, it was just mind-blowing, and it was mind-blowing the way that he heard these two songs, and then somehow put them together seamlessly like it was awesome (laughs) like I still can't even get over it I will never not hear either one of those songs and not think of this epic mashup that he made it's just mind-blowing and this is another moment where you can see the level of musicianship that Jake has and it an example of the incredible way that his musical mind thinks. 
Like, this is, this mashup of these two songs was just a perfect example of that. It just, it was amazing. I just, I really cannot convey it enough how amazing it was. It just, still blowing my mind. I mean, if Umphreys wanted to try to do this, it would be awesome to hear it as a full band, but I wouldn't be mad if this is the way that that mashup stayed. Just Jake doing it because it was just incredible. Another Jake original after that, Road Sign Wave. This one has a very heavy prodigy sound to it. Jake says he wrote it about six years ago. He described it as break beady post triple wide-ish. And I will admit that I have listened to the triple wide since this Halloween show and I can hear it. I can definitely tell um, that that road sign wave song was written in the same time frame as the triple wide. No opener next, followed by a cover of Roll 'em Easy by Little Feet. Never played full band, but I can definitely see Brennan and Jake covering this one during a shitty limo show. Ending the evening with a cover of Mother by Pink Floyd with studio manager Jim Leap on backing vocals. Jimmy was also a guest at my birthday show and sang a few tunes, including the birthday song by the Beatles request that I made. In case you did not know, Jimmy has been a guest on the show two times. He was actually on the very first episode of the podcast, and recently he was on episode 108, where we got treated to a tour of Boondock Studio, so definitely make sure you check that out if you haven't. It's a very, very awesome episode. Umphreys has never covered this Floyd song, but Brendan and Jake have, and recently did during their show in Brendan's basement back in August. Also, fun fact, last year during the holiday show, Mother by Pink Floyd was the song they did the Christmas parody of. They have done Santa Oddity before based on the David Bowie tune Space Oddity, and that can be found as a hidden track on Hall of Fame 2011 after Bright Light's Big City. Brendan and Jake also sang L.A. Santa at the 2016 holiday show, a parody of the Doors song, L.A. Woman. I'll link that in the show notes, and there is also a link where you can watch the YouTube video of the Mother parody from last year's holiday show, which, fun fact, also featured Andy on drums, T-Bird on harmonica, Mike Racky on slide, Bayless on keys, and Jake on acoustic. I seriously cannot recommend enough that you do one of these shows. It's worth every penny and will be an experience that you will never, ever forget. Even the hangs, the lessons they offer, there's yoga with Annie Bayless, all of it. It's really cool, and if you haven't checked out their stuff, you really should. There's a link in the show notes where you can check out everything that Lively offers. So that's all I have for this week of the show. There are a ton of links in the show notes for everything that I reference throughout the show. There's also links where you can binge on past episodes, book your own conversation, and be a guest on the show. Check out Conversations and subscribe to the show's YouTube channel where you can snag some official merch from the Dropped Among This Crowd Etsy store. Subscribe to Conduit E-Magazine and a ton more so check all of that out thank you so much for joining me i'll see you around these parts next week mad love